So guys, welcome along to the Burr Podcast Show. This is week five, and you are with me, Owen, a.k.a. the Burr. Myself, Sean Scullion, a.k.a. the Handsome Stranger, and with us today, <laughs> we have Tom Smith, entrepreneur. Tom. Merry Christmas, trips. I'm Great th- to see you on the show. Thanks Thank for you. coming up, Tom. Thanks for having me. I'm excited for this one. I've, I've watched some of your stuff before. You're, you're definitely a character, so we're... We're, 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 we've got you up to the sticks, but it's hard to get you city men out of the city. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be a different country. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your passport. <laughs> so, Tom, let's uh, let's take us for what? Who is Tom? I'm just one of the lads, you know. So you're you're sorry to jump in. You're a Belfast man, obviously. Um, you're from Belfast. Where where did you grow up, and what was it like growing up in Belfast for you? You know, we moved from Belfast to the suburbs when I was a kid. Um, the war was raging across the, the whole country, as, as we all know. Um, my mum and dad are still alive, and they're incredible people. My daddy was a postman, my mum was a co worker, my mum still is. And we grew up in a house full of love, um, completely skint, but like my mum and daddy give us the best life ever. Um, you know, little things like going to Tullymore Forest and stuff like that. We couldn't afford holidays and bits and pieces going down to Dublin and Bray in a caravan and we just had the most amazing life. But all my mates always would have got the best stuff out of club books and, you know, anybody growing up. Do you remember the case catalogues and stuff? Oh, I yeah. yeah. You Your man used to come round on the Wednesday with the wee flip book, I, taking well, a fiver a week. Well, my parents didn't believe in debt, so we didn't have all that. So, you know, although we had, a, you know, a really great childhood, there was things that I wanted. So at the age of 10, I decided to get my first job working in a fish and chip shop. And that gave me a choice in life then when I was working my ass off. I could pay £10 a week, 10 quid, you know, but it really helped, you know. So sometimes if I would have saved up for a few weeks, I could have bought the tracksuit, the football boots that I wanted. And like I've said many times or other times, it was simply looking at the money box, realising I put that there. That's my money. So the young hustler entrepreneur was born from 10 years old, realising money definitely give you a choice in life. I went from that going up through school. Um, started working on a building sites and things like that. Um, I remember a foreman completely hated me because he didn't have the tools how to deal with somebody else who was a different religion. So I broke him by being like the best labourer on the site, which I ended up earning his admiration. Um, and since then, I've just I've worked my ass off from being a kid. You know, I have really put it in. I continue to 15, 16 hour days are my normal. You know, when I'm in England away from away from kids. 20, 22 hour days, or, or when I'm putting in. So it's no fluke when success starts turning up, but people don't see the 30 years that you've been doing behind the scenes. There, so your hunger was there, straight in, 10. You got that first that first job where you had that, what what you coveted, because that'll resonate with a lot of people watching this, that, that moment where you were like, you know what, I worked. I got the kicker shoes that everyone else had that I seen for a long time and I wasn't oh, getting. Yeah. And the hunger starts coming. How do you keep that? How do you keep that even to now? Like if you you know It's right there in my stomach right now. It's right down through my arms. It's right across my head. It's in every molecule in my body. What? You know, it's discipline. It's I, just there all the time. Like, I, like I'd run through a brick wall. I genuinely it's there all the time. It's like unlimited energy. Before you were on there, I was watching a podcast you had done before. What time do you get up in the morning? 4 a.m. Every morning? Six days a week. Yeah. That is mental. Well, so you have your but, days work done before you... People why, is it, why is it mental? Because it's sorry, head, it's mental. <laughs> I'm getting up at that time now because of babies, but... but, but what time do you get up normally? No, oh, about six. Six. And, uh, and I thought it was early. The, yeah, ch- so the children know, slept longer, maybe I would be a bit later. The scenario for me, I get up at four, six days a week. Yeah. So for somebody who gets up at seven... I'm 39 days a year ahead of those people. Like, how can they even compete with me? I beat them before they wake up. But the reason that I do it is because I have so much to do, and I'm so grateful for it. I can't stay in bed. I have to get up at four. When I don't want to get up, I still get up, because motivation doesn't exist. It's discipline. And after a triple espresso, a coffee, a glass of water with vitamin C in it, I'm ready to go. It's just became... Something that I have installed in myself through daily routines and daily rituals has just became normal for me. What is your daily routine? Up four, 
coffee, glass of water with, with vitamin C, and then it's mantra time. And I write this mantra page about this amazing individual. But that amazing individual is me. And people are maybe, why does he think he is saying something to God? Well, I'm not going to write something average about myself. If I want to turn into something incredible, I have to believe them that I'm that guy. So this mantra page is like, I'm a warrior of Jesus Christ. I'm a total success and positivity magnet. I'm a huge money and vast wealth magnet. I'm putting it out to the universe, all these positive affirmations about myself. And one of the amazing things that we'll probably get on to later on was last year I wrote, I'm going to go from magazines to TV and movie scenes. So, you know, we'll touch on that later. But every single thing I write in that is my mantra. I believe I'm that guy. When you're writing your mantra, do you go deliberately for big? You, because if it's, if it's easy, it's not. Okay, so here's the question. Would us three go out tonight to an average cinema to watch an average movie with an average cast? No. Not a chance. Write the blockbuster of your life in your mantra and become that guy or become that girl. Walk in the shoes of the man or the woman who you really want to become and become that person. But when I get hit with the kitchen sink, because life hits you with it sometimes, writing that mantra realigns me and I remember, I'm that guy. And then for me, it's gratitude's next it's, it's for, you know, the memories of my granny. It's for the cup of coffee. It's for my beautiful wife. It's for my gorgeous daughters, Far and Rihanna. It's for coming through COVID. It's for a hot shower. Like we had said, food in your fridge. Oil in your oil tank. That's gratitude. It's not Lamborghinis and Ferraris. It's, yeah. it's, it's the basics. It's memories of my best friend, Gary, who's dead. It breaks my heart every day. It's, that's what's in my gratitude. Mantra, armour on. Protecting my thoughts and protecting me. Gratitude from my heart and then I'm the architect of my own life then I write my goals I write the top of the page I am so happy and grateful now that and then I write everything in advance that I've already achieved it I write it's done and I sign it I put a date on it for each goal and then I go after them goals like my life depends on it because it does and I keep knocking them out of the park all of the time do you, I'm never going to stop do you go back to them? I've read journals and, and burst out laughing and burst out crying. No, I've done it, killed it, done it again, boom. And I just keep knocking it out of the park. Because if you take massive action to achieve those and write tactics down every day, 50 phone calls, go to that guy's office, go to that girl's office. If you go after them, you'll achieve them. But everybody's sitting about wanting to manifest a Lambo or this life on Instagram. Are you living your best life? No chance. Go and get it. But you're saying you said there about um, the sixteen hour days and being a, being away from your wife and children and stuff. Um, obviously, you know you're having to give up so much. Well, I, I you know, your family and yeah. whatever else. But but you're giving them so much from what you're achieving. Is that fair enough to say? I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. There has to be sacrifice. You know, sacrifice for me isn't watching is not watching television, not seeing my beautiful wife Dolores, not seeing the kids sometimes. You know, very long days, not getting to eat as regular as I want to on those days. And just pulling in and having protein shakes and a bit of fruit as I'm driving from Dundee back to Manchester in the same day. But it has to come a sacrifice. You how, how, how can It's like going to the gym. A muscle can't grow unless you're putting it through its paces. It's just everything's relevant. So Dolores obviously has to be a part of the team now. She, she knows that this is it and this is because if you, you know, you can't, I always say it, and I've said this, you can't have it both ways. You can't have the things right to work. If you want to go out, there, as you said, there has to be sacrifice. There has to be something that, you know, there's, if the hours are required, you, if you're spending 16 hours, if you're over Manchester, I, I follow on your thing, you travel an awful lot. If you're over there, you can't be somewhere here. You know, you're not here and, and, and things. So there has to be that trade-off. Is that something you've discussed yeah, and had I, that do, out, do, do or is what? it just a natural progression? No, it's not, and sometimes it can be challenging. Um, you know, I don't think people, you know, a woman who runs a household gets enough credit. Like my wife runs our house with military precision, and see for anybody that has to go and live on their own for a while, or if you're away working, you realise how lucky you have it when you've got an amazing woman in your life. The only thing she's ever asked me for in her life, ever, is her time. Please spend time with me. Yeah. And when we're talking about, you know. Having to sacrifice, sometimes I have to sacrifice being away, and sometimes I have to sacrifice not making her happy because I'm not there all the time. But I think she probably deserves a, a medal of lifetime achievement for sticking me <laughs> because I am all in and I am on it all the time. But she does realize, and randomly she'll pop me a text message Thank you for giving us an amazing life. 
but I can't do it without her. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you definitely need the partnership. But the only thing she ever asked me for is spending more time with her. And we'll try our best. I suppose I don't like saying try and because try and's land. But I go out of my way to make sure that, she, that her love tank's overflowing. She's feeling, you know, that I am committed. I am the, you know, the, the husband who's there and I'm doing all the right things. And I do a pretty good job. Yeah. For a play, because that, I, that was something that when I would watch or follow some of your stuff and I would be looking at it and I'd be like, Jesus, you know, it's an, it, it's intense. It is intense. And for people yeah. watching there and you're saying 16 hours and they could be sitting there going, all right, right, you know, but it is. And, and, and I genuinely would say I'll outwork anybody on the planet. Anybody. Like, if I have to, I'll just stay awake. I can do it. I've ran half a Mount Everest with Molly from UFC, three hours, 45 minutes non-stop during COVID for children's cancer. Paramedics and all on site. I went to work after it. So if anybody wants to have a go, I'm ready, like, all the time. Gloves on. Gloves off. Let's go. <laughs> the, Whatever. T- and it's funny, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this because I'm a massive UFC man. I massive, love my, my combat sports. Um, but t- Tom... You what? can try and put me in an arm bar next. <laughs> <laughs> the bear. Good luck with that. Bear. I, 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 I watch a lot of... It doesn't mean I'm good at it either. <laughs> it, uh, definitely not. But uh, tell me, Tom, so you're up. You're 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 starting your day four o'clock. You're you're buying. You're straight into going. You you you've done your mantra. You've done your thing. What what? When do you start? When do you then? You're out. You're out, and you're going. You you've set up, and you're ready to go. You're out. It depends on the day. So you know, a, a normal day like tomorrow will be four a.m. I'll write for ninety minutes, goals, gratitude, mantra, and then I'll, I'm ready to rock. I'll then walk out into our gym at the house. I'll do cardio, half an hour stair climber. I'll then get showered and then I'll go to the gym. Yeah. So I'll probably hit the office for eight thirty and I'll have done my goals, gratitude, mantra, and train twice. <laughs> you have a person's day's work before. Let's go oh, before they're ready to go. But it's just you know people may think that's extreme, but and I've said this many times. I didn't wake up that guy. I yeah. built that person. Yeah. Who that's just normal for me now. But then that's now your routine. And it is, and it benefits me. And the, th- the whole thing that people don't realize is I love consistency. And consistency is a secret of all success. Whether you're a fighter, an entrepreneur, a dad, a mom, whatever, consistency works. Well, all tell me of the time. then on that, if you were through out of that, as in for whatever reason you didn't get up at four no, and you didn't get to but the gym. That's a great question because you've just asked it. I do get through out of it, and mm-hmm. I did about six years ago at Christmas, and I'm like, what am I? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. And I now realise that I still need to keep myself busy over Christmas. Regardless, you try to keep doing the same things to a certain extent. Now, Christmas will be great, my body will start slowing down, and I'll recoup and I'll sleep, but I can't just stop. So, you know, if the Lord says, Can you go and do the recycling? Absolutely, I can't wait to go and do it because I love just keeping myself yeah. ticking over. Yeah. I'll go and write some motivational quotes. I'm already writing a second book, I'll go and spend an hour on it. I'll email somebody in America reaching out, continue to grow my network. So, you know, I'm doing a lot of work in America next year to do with sales training. Keep the momentum going all the time by simply touching base with people. So, look, you brought up uh, America, and obviously you're doing work in America in the minute. Yeah. Is it Grant uh, 10X? Yeah, so I touched bit. I ended up, I really wanted to work with those guys. And the story behind it is, you know, even my wife says, like, how are you going to connect with these guys? And I'm like, easy. I'm going to take massive action. This is going to work. So during COVID, we lost £6 million within two weeks, our business. As you can imagine, the yeah. whole the whole book and chart just stopped. But then it even got worse. So I thought Booking.com would have been an alliance with us, considering we pay them, I don't know, a couple of million a year in commission. But did anybody in uh, hospitality get pushed into a corner by Booking.com and were forced to give refunds to people all over the, the, the world. So then that was even a, a, a worse hit. So the next thing then... We had to keep coming back. So as we come back, we stopped surviving and started thriving. So then I started saying to myself, I'm going to show my wins to the Grand Cardone team. So little did I know, I started sending these guys videos. I started sending them, connecting with everybody on LinkedIn. Then I said to myself, I need to get in touch with them properly. And I sent them a big gorgeous donut delivery to their office. So that I got all these videos back. Hey, Tom, thanks very much. I became good friends with Jared Glant, who's Grant's number one. I sent another donut delivery. Then the next thing, the guys said, look, we've got something for you. I'm like, what is it? This is your wins are exceptional. 
watch this and sent me a photo and it was my wins being played in Miami to all the Grand Corona team. And it was me talking to Manchester saying we opened on a grade five lockdown on the 4th of January and within two weeks we were fully booked. As hotels closed, we thrived. But that came from being in the hustle and being out there. I walked the streets of Manchester six weeks before. So then I started sharing all of my wins with these guys and then our alliance became super strong. I became a Grand Cardone licensee. Since then, I've been back and forth. I was at 10 acts in Miami, seen Donald Trump and all. It was just nuts. Brilliant. That's right. He talked it. Uh, I, I followed that because of uh, Sean and me we both follow Grant. And it, uh, that's, that's, that you're leveling up there. Do you know the lovely thing about American people? But like, you know, we, we've touched on that when we're having a coffee. They want each other to win. Yeah. They want each other to be successful. Or the guy or the girl who feels. They're helping them get back up again, and they see that as progress and as courage. Where you find a lot in this country, it's like you tell somebody you have a business idea, I'd never work. Of course, but then the secret one with that is, you know, people will judge you by their own failures because they don't want you to do it. Yeah. They don't want you to be successful. Other times, a loved one won't want you to do it because they don't want you working too hard. Like my mum, she knows how hard I work, and she says sometimes, son, you need to calm it down. But I, I, although I love her so much, I can't slow down. It's just in me to keep going and going and going. I have my health checked twice a year. You know, I'm very, very healthy and fit. And I know I can sustain it. So I'm not just doing it off my hip. The, but be careful whose opinion you, you listen to. The opinion of fools, it's not for me, like. Yeah. It, but it, it, that's, it, it is, we were, tra- we were chatting earlier and we were saying, it, when you're away... Over in the likes of America, that energy, that positive, that there, they, 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 they named it the land of opportunity. They built yeah. their idea around that there is an opportunity for everyone here and go for it. And they yeah. do, they do, they buy in and they support. And some may people say, and yes, yeah, sometimes there is a level of bullshit with them. They're full on, but the energy can't be denied. That positive, they go for it. But you're here. And you're in, you're here. The, the, I always said people here want to see you do okay, but they never want to see you do better than them. They never want to see you go up above them because then that shows them more where they're at, not where you're at. To be honest, I I don't give it a a second thought or even a look over my shoulder. I just, I'm on my own journey. I'm on a world stage in my head. It's global, the world I live in. I'm listening to the opinion of people in our amazing country. If it's a positive one, yes, I'll listen to it all day long. If it's somebody who's doing, because I have a few friends who are, I have a friend in particular, who is at a whole different level. And when he says one sentence to you, how do we de-risk this situation, Tom? You're like, wow, because that man's killing it and I have all the respect for him. I'll listen to his advice. But if anybody wants to try and be negative against me, good luck. I don't care. It it is what it is. A lot of, uh, we had ones on and we were discussing this before. We were like, if you want to go to that level, sometimes you have to cut that negative out for them people. Stop, Stop being in their time. Stop taking that, you know, Got to cut that out because you don't have time for that there. But so we're now you're over in you're over in LA or over was it was LA there? LA, it? Miami, New York. Oh, that was all last year. Um, I've been in Miami again in March for ten acts. I was Matt Grant in person, Stanley McGrant and stuff. And it's all great, but it just really all it is is rocket fuel to inspire me to keep going. Um, and I haven't scratched the surface yet. What I'm going to do? Twenty twenty three belongs to me. That's what I write my mantra. What is, what, co- we'll, we'll just go back one, one thing because we're there. COVID, 2019, mm. come in. Um, what way was that before you, but the, the understanding, the realisation of what that was and then what did that, what, what, what did you have to do to, to kick on there? So, like I said, we lost millions at the very start. Um, a lot of hotel businesses all went to the wall. I banned any of us talking about the virus. We only followed government guidelines, but we didn't buy into the hysteria and the madness. I had some of the top people in my company advising me as the government changed its guidelines, because I'm eight years now not watching the news. So I didn't want it to infect me with the negativity that it was going to make me ill without even being infected by a virus. So we continued to put out LinkedIn posts, social media posts, but our posts were things like, we're in this together. This is only temporary. And like the National Health Service and what those nurses had all done for us, like, wow, it was so commendable. So we were putting a photograph of a nurse or a doctor, you know, putting out our gratitude for what these people were doing. And, you know, you know what everybody forgets too quick? Sorry for going off on one. Mm-hmm. But I remember standing in Hollywood at our house 
and the siren going in the Harlan and Wolf. Like me and my wife crying and clapping our hands for what those doctors and nurses done because there was so much compassion. Yeah. So I'll answer your question now, but like, does everybody forget how much we all loved each other during mm-hmm. COVID? And it's funny. You know, what the fuck? Yeah, it's funny. This <laughs> so just, just to finish that, so what did we do? We went from making a 1,000 sales calls a week as a company to 5,000 sales calls. 4,500 calls were probably not answered, but the 500 that were, were essential industries like Amazon, because people still needed to be able to buy stuff. Construction, Boris Johnson done something fantastic. He let construction continue. That's why we didn't go into a slump and a huge recession after COVID immediately. Um, but then, so the, the 500 sales calls that were, we started then filling our buildings. And then what did we do? The craziest thing, what everybody said, I expanded and opened another 300 apartments during the global pandemic. So we went from 250 to 550. So we stopped surviving and started thriving. Because one thing I wasn't going to do was look over my shoulder two years down the road and go, I should have done this, this, and this. I'd done it all, including writing a book, opening a mentoring course, and everything else. So uh, as everybody sort of had an economical heart attack, and rightly so, and it was the worst trading partner from the Second World War, I made every second count. I didn't furlough myself because I didn't have to. I just kept working and working and working and working. It... it uh it is funny because I, I love hearing that for the simple reason is I remember it came and, and you know me and you had these conversations. I was starting up uh, the competition business and then all of a sudden people were like, what are you going to do? And I was like, what do you mean what am I going to do? I'm going to keep going. Mm-hmm. And I'll just say it out here. I called bullshit now. I was like, this is bullshit. This is. And then two weeks later, obviously I, I had COVID and it wasn't great. It wasn't a thing. And I was like, no, it ain't stopping. The ship's not stopping here. We're rolling on. I was driving around the country doing my work. I got stopped one time and he goes, the very words uh, it was the guard says to me, he goes, uh, is that essential travel? And he says, if you invested what I invested, it'd be essential to you too. And he well, just goes I, to me, go on ahead. I had a duty occur to my staff for me to keep going. Yeah. I had a duty occur for the for the for their families and stuff, for everybody to be surviving off their wages or their hourly rate or their salaries. So I also didn't ask my sales team to travel anywhere in the UK. I travelled. I got the boats. I got the jets sometimes, I'm done what I gotta do. But I walked the streets of cities when it was like ghost towns. I walked into every construction site, took everybody's number down. So when there was a team of joiners coming from Cardiff or somebody coming up from London, the incredible four men in these building sites all knew me. There's that Irish guy, Tom. But I always brought the guys in wee bags of donuts out of Tesco's and formed relationships. So like I put that graft in. And a friend of mine called me one day and says, He's a very well-to-do man in Belfast. He says, young man, what are you doing today? And I says, I'm in Manchester, sir, walking the streets in the wind and the rain. And he went, what? I'm like, and what? There's 55 live building sites, sir. And I'm not going to let my company go. I'm going to win. And he says, that's fucking commendable. And I says, thank you, sir. And that's what I've done. I put the graft in when nobody else was doing it. So and another thing that I've done every night, I drove around every hotel car park and photographed all the cars and vans that had branding on them to encourage them to come and stay with us at night, hustling all day and at night. So then our company always was going to win. So, you know, people think, how do they do it and stuff? All I do is work and graft my ass off. So that's what I just applied it the whole way through COVID and it worked. You were saying there with the jet, you're going to have to buy one of these jets soon? Yeah, I'm buying one, 2023. What? 100%. Why would I not? Deadly. Love it. Well, well up, I won't. just uh, I've had the I've went through bits and pieces for about twelve months. I've been researching it. There's a guy Ian from uh, from Northern Ireland um, who knows everything about it. And the more we have looked at it now, it makes sense to get one. Is yeah. it a, a commercial idea that it'll be for you and Union and then out when? when I, it, it, well, you know the thing about it is it won't be sitting on tarmac. Yeah. It'll be constantly being chartered. Yeah. And then what we we're also going to do is if I'm flying to Manchester. I'll go on to my social media yeah. uh, with my white teeth and just say to everybody, guys, I'm going on Tuesday in a week's time. There's four seats left. There are £1,000 a seat. And top CEOs and stuff will have no issues. Buying a seat to go to Manchester yeah. and maybe yeah. come back. But we'll charter it. We're going to do charters to be there. Top podcasters would have no problem getting on or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're really going to make it work for us financially. Well, I actually was... Uh, who was it bought one and it says, if you're clever enough, you have your own jet and it costs you nothing. That, well, this, is, this isn't going to cost us. You know, We've already looked at the business model. We've studied it for a year. I'm going to sell seats on social media. We're going to do 
a uh, trip to Mykonos will do a trip to Santorini, a trip to Ibiza, and for anybody that can afford business class but can't afford a private jet, we'll sell and we're going to be selling seats. So, guys, you heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> We're doing it, yeah. 100%. Hot off the press. Our next live will be from a Learjet. <laughs> it's, it's happening. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. I love, I love to see it. I genuinely, genuinely say that. I love to see it. I love to see the fact that Northern Ireland people are bringing that mentality on, that they want to bring it out of the dark ages. But why would you not see somebody, like, like as a kid growing up and I was watching films and stuff and I seen, you know, Lambos and Porsches and stuff, I just used to say, I'm going to work my ass off to get that. Do you? Why, why would it be the yeah. opposite? Because I don't get that. Like that jealousy bit doesn't live inside my body. Yeah. So if you see the young boy in the street, who's going to take the picture. I've seen some of the cars in the competition. I've been fortunate enough to have, or, yeah. or, or we had. And I always see there was a, there's the young boy opposite me, and he's mad about cars. And I make sure I stop because I oh, just well, picture me. I, I picture I, me as a couple mad about cars, and I was like, "Don't be the dick that rolls on past them." No, I I can I can really sort of tell the truth on that. Uh, I love stopping and letting a kid jump in and take his photograph. And without me getting into it, I do another few bits and pieces for people. Yeah. Whether their kids have autism and stuff and all that there. Um, all day long. Because there's, there's a real feel good in it. Why, but, if you can, not even that, why would you not do it? Uh, if you can give somebody your time and it costs you nothing, if your time yeah. costs you nothing, why not do it? It makes some kid feel like a million exactly. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about it in their emails and show them, oh, look at this. Uh, of course, uh, all day long. Yeah. No, oh, that is. I, I, I actually love doing it. Uh, love doing it. Class. The uh, so or, or you you're an adrenaline. You're. I think you you love the fast cars too. The mega. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be saying nothing about speed that's being recorded. <laughs> I like going fast. Seventy mile an hour. Oh, good. I, 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 the fact that you're there in about two seconds. In the first, mile an hour. <laughs> we, uh, me and Sean, of a while uh, we'll not go in because we we would do a lot of Need for Speed. We were adrenaline junkies too. But so tell, we're moving on, Tom. Uh, the 2023. What is 2023 for Tom Smith? Oh my God, I just, I have to say, I cannot wait. I am so excited. You know, I don't go out drinking and stuff at Christmas and all things like that. That's not for me. So um, it's just complete domination. You know, I genuinely am so looking forward to expanding um, my, my dream apartments business um, construction. I'm about to st start building eight houses in Leeds tomorrow, which is great, a million quid each. Um, and that was just a goal that I wrote, the business partner up with two amazing guys, which I've done. Um, tar blocks is going to be next. I want to start building towers. Um, and I have a, a mentor and client from London who has the expertise on that. Um, movies is something I've got into. I had my first acting role three weeks ago. Um, right. Can we talk? Can we talk about that or is it hundred percent rehabs next? I'm going to be opening rehab clinics. We're going right. to be doing our first one in England. I have an, another amazing mentor uh, client who um, has specialist care homes. And um, we're also going to probably be opening specialist car homes for children in Northern Ireland as well. Um, my mentor in business um, is going to go global. Sales training has been a big thing for me now. We're going to be doing it. I'm this is to, dream mentoring we're talking about? Dream mentoring, yeah. Uh, I'm going to MAGA to do sales training with a huge dental company in Florida in February. Um, my Audible book should be out before Christmas. I'm going to run Seven Peaks in the Moons. I'm buying a jet. It's just non-stop, you know. Uh, uh, for me, like you I, need a crew, you need a TV crew. Will you? But I, I genuinely, I go at it every day. Like my life depends on it. I make every single second count. Elon Musk says make every second of every day count, and I do. And I treat everything with urgency. You know, if if you say to me, "Oh, you okay, Tom? Can you send us that email?" I'll stop immediately what I'm doing, send you the email. It's done, and I'll continue to keep going and going and going and going. And at night, I can fall asleep within about thirty seconds. Which my wife hates. Uh, uh, well, I, 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 so I'm just out. But you know, it's just. So tell me this: with there, let's touch on the movie. What's the movie? And <sighs> where, where, when are we going to get to see it? September. The film is Two Days of Blood. Um, it's part of the Rise of the Food Soldiers Soldier uh, trilogy type of stuff. Um, and how did this come about? So in my mantra in 2021, I wrote, "I'm going from magazines to TV and movie scenes." And I, I just I felt this connection with this sentence and I wrote it. So then I started writing it for a few weeks and write, there's no point me writing this if I'm not going to do something about it. So then I started writing the goal in align with it. 
And I'm friends with Mr. Keith Bishop, Johnny Dapp's PR manager, right. who runs a huge PR company in London. So I started stalking Keith. Listen, Keith, I'm not going to go away. He's fuck's sake, young man. I'm like, listen, I'm going to keep on at you, on at you. But, but that's part of Massive Action, making all the phone calls, going and seeing Keith. And the next thing, he hooked me up with Terry Stone. Terry Stone's a film director yep. and actor. And I got on like a house on fire with Terry. And... He is a complete and utter gentleman. He's made some success with him raising the foot soldiers. Yeah, but he's also he's also give us a film industry in the UK, yeah. and he's one of the nicest fellas and most professional people I've ever met. Um, they've now brought me in as the team and part of the team. I'm exactly the producer for the next few films. I'm going to the red carpet again this end of January for another one of the foot soldier films. Um, I'm helping now raise funding for the films as well. We're going to. Abitha in the summer for Rise of a Food Soldier in Abitha, which is going to be like <laughs> epic. Um, that'll definitely be the private jet and yachts and stuff and all that. But the thing is, I wrote a sentence and a mantra. I believed it wholeheartedly because you always believe what I write. I wrote the goal then, which, and this is the perfect scenario of what I teach people on Dream Mentoring. Believe what I wrote in my mantra, knew I was that guy, applied it to your goal, wrote it like my life depended on it, wrote, a, wrote the date on it knowing when I was going to make it happen. Took massive action, it's now reality. If you follow that system that I show people and train them and teach them, it works. It'll always work. And now... Your you mentoring, know. so we've talked about the... Yeah, we're, we're going to put that in the description here. You have a Christmas special on, on the Dream Mentor. But well, that's just a pre-recorded. Um, the, 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 the full structured course is a 16-week course. We've started uh, a new one this January. It'll be two hits a week of me live on Zoom. And then I've got one to one clients that are at a, another higher level too, um, but it's it's taken over like it's fantastic. And you're networking now with these. You're starting to move into different. Yeah, I'm, I'm opening businesses industry. with my clients. You know, uh, which is a lovely thing to do because it's taking you to different places, doing different different things. And also finding and, and, and making amazing friendships throughout this too. You know, it's opening all sorts of doors. Floor is an example too. Going and doing sales training, and one of the guys is definitely going to be getting it there. I says to him. Okay, just send me the email over to finalise it. And he says, me, I'll try and get it over before it close of play Wednesday. And this was on a Monday. What? <laughs> send the fucking email. <laughs> so, you know, but so many people are, are sort of do lolly and, and waiting on stuff. You know, when I'm genuinely teaching people, don't put time between you and a task. Treat everything like your life depends on it. Hustle every day. Be all in all the time. I have to your, say Your work it, rate no. and productivity just goes through the yeah. roof. You're... You're intense, and I, I, you can see how you're doing so much because it is an intense, you are an intense person, and you just, I can see that that level, there's no second, there's no, there's just that one gear of just, I'm going here at that. The, thanks. The, 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 the dream mentor, yeah, surrounding yourself with them people that, that want to be in that mindset, want that level, want the, we were talking, touched on cars. Whatever they're byproducts of of that mentality of of yeah for me it, it's the most rewarding thing in the planet dream mentor when you're teaching people self development you're showing them a system that works and they're a planet and they are completely smashing it do you learn back from that is there is there a two way in that do you, do you get things from them that the, yeah, you, I learn the, back from that you learn every single day I'll learn never to drive the cookstone again <laughs> <laughs> um, Brilliant. no but you know you, of course you learn every day like I, I, like I'm constantly. F- film myself for audiobooks, podcasts, you know, Audible, all of the time. And then somebody might say something, and I completely learn from it, of course. You know, it, the biggest fool is the person who thinks they know it all. And I don't. Um, I'm at a stage where I've made a, a shit ton of mistakes, where I can actually mentor people, because it's coming from my heart. It's coming from real life experiences, going through business. It's like one of my clients, Matthew, Matthew just became a property developer through every single thing I've taught him, and now we're building eight houses about just under a million quid each in Leeds. But he's applied everything that I've taught him. Yeah. And that's because every day is a school day. And I think the UK and Ireland are only touching on it, realising, hold on, self-development is everything. The best investment is always going to be in yourself. Always. Yeah. yeah. It, it, tell why, me why, why are you not signing up for Dream Mentor? I'm not going until you've signed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, we weren't, <laughs> <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't letting We weren't letting you leave to the rally car Dream Mentor on the side of a tea. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, Tom, and and look, listen. It it's it's something that me and Sean have discussed as, as on this journey. 
And we, we the, us three guys sat down just this time last week. We yeah. sat down and says, right, guys, what, what what do we want from this? What what do we want? Where do we want to, to see ourselves? And we and and we we were putting it there, and I was like, we're at home. I actually messaged you, and I was like, I think I, I don't think we aimed high enough. I don't think I don't think we mm. went big enough. I'm not scared by what what. Yeah, and your goals should scare the life clean out of you. You know, I'm not writing small goals. Like I'm, you know, when I'm writing a goal to buy a jet, it feels normal now. You know, it's because. It's inevitable, it's going to happen. But building a skyscraper with 600 apartments in it scares the life out of me. That much that I will go out of my way. But if, even if I fall short of that and build something with 300 apartments in it, I'm still winning. Yeah. Do you know? It, and then I'll learn from the 300 block do you know to be able I, to go and do the 600 mm-hmm. block. Do you know how I know this works? Because before you come on, Tom, I wrote on mine. I will be in a man's private jet next year. And it's just, it's all aligning. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> but here, Tom, we, we we're, we're touched, and I love that, and I love the Dream Mentor, and we're, we're moving on. We're, we're coming into Christmas. Some people, and we talked about this outside, and very humble goes, and it was funny because, you know, you, you get preconceived ideas for people coming, and I watched and follow your journey, and and see that uh, one thing always come across was you're always on the go, like the, mm. the first thing in the morning, the last thing you're flying or you're back and forth, you're always in the go. But, but Christmas you know, just you know, you're always on the go. People don't realize sometimes I'm getting off a flight at five to nine, and either getting home in time or grabbing a taxi and going to pick my little girl up from dance. You know, I'm just. Normal. I'll still completely go out of my way because going home to see my wife's face and just going, oh my God, I love that woman or seeing one of my daughters or picking, you know, far off and dance, that means more to me than any million pound, billion pound deal or a Rolex. Just spending a half an hour talking to my little girl on the way home or asking my wife her life, her day was that day. So, you know, I might be flat out, but I still make sure that I'm there. Yeah. Yeah, well, tell me then. We uh, or what's the point? We're coming into Christmas time, mm. um, and we, we we're discussing. I love Christmas, and I have had a great childhood. We didn't, uh, you know. We, Did you get we, bags we, of ashes? <laughs> there was I coal. Thought, there I was coal. The and stocking was filled. But I tell you what, see, if you got a bag of coal now, you you would be doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> but we 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 were talking about this, and it was the very simple things, and you, and you touched on it too. You had a happy childhood. I don't think I we, we, we grew up and it was hard you know there was five children in our house I don't think we, we never want there wasn't a single thing we wanted for and I you're always mindful maybe someone in school you had this or they had that and you, you, you want mm. but you never I never knew that we didn't get the, the things that some of them got because we were that happy and as you said mm. the holiday I'll tell you this I'll ask you this question now and you just just to, to jump right back the best holidays in your life when you think about holidays and you go to all the places, you go to the Bahamas, you can go to Maldives and stay in water, the best memories of holidays in your life was when you were a kid in that caravan, yeah. wrecking and turning back. Do you know something? I remember going back 10 years ago and we hired a, va- a caravan in, in um, Donegal, which was supposed to be luxury, right? <laughs> and it wasn't luxury. <laughs> but see, like we watched uh, The Wizard of Oz on some wee silly DVD player. We, had the, we were out horse riding on the beach um, the fish and chips in Donegal was incredible. The kids washed my jeep. They done. They were out playing on their on their their wee f- like flickers or something at the time or or skateboards or whatever, and it cost nothing. Yeah. And it was the best holiday. Like if you ever asked the two of them still, and they've been everywhere. Memories. That's the that's our that's our favorite holiday. Yeah. The caravan at Donegal. But you know, and Sean touched on it, and this is the thing about children. It's the time. But that's what they you had know, your you, own divided, and and that's you know you you're about to touch on Christmas. You know, for me, giving someone your time is the best gift you could give anybody, uh, and I don't do it enough. But being in the present moment, like if I'm on date night with my wife, my phone's away. When I'm now with my little girl or my, my eldest, I want to be in the present moment. I don't want to be sitting on Instagram or anything mad like that. I just want to be, and that's for me. It's the best gift I could be receiving, spending time with them. Now one hundred percent going into twenty twenty three. I'm I my phone. I'm and I would say it. Say it to my wife. It's far too much. I'm too en- engrossed, and it's it's taken. I think it's taken a lot of. It's taken the best. You well, uh, it's one of the things that I would and my mentor and that I insist on by about week six when we're into the program, and it, it's changed my life. Uh, on a Sunday, like when I leave this amazing podcast, when I go home, my my phone will go away for the rest of the night, and I will not look at it for love nor money. Um, and I, my clients would sort of struggle with it at the start, but it's a game changer. 
my phone goes away and no matter what, I will not go on to it. And I feel a complete detox from it. And I've found myself, if a scenario pops up on a Sunday that I have to deal with, I'll never go into work on a Monday, that fresh, amazing self feeling, yes, if I've been on that phone on a Sunday. And I just, I completely come off it. Six hours minimum. And now on a Sunday, it's anything from 12 to 16 hours I'm off it. And it's changed everything. Well, that's how I'm going to work. It's hooked, it's hooked everybody in. It's yeah. an addiction in itself. Yeah. Well, but look, can I ask you a different question? Um, you had mentioned there you don't drink anymore. Mm. So what? where did that come about? Is it just a decision you made? You were like, it doesn't agree with me. I don't want to drink anymore. Or were you an alcoholic? You know what? Yeah, I um, stopped drinking. I've been on the journey eight years. And I've definitely had my falls. Um, but I like going to AA. Um, I'm not somebody that has to go because, oh my God, I'm busting off a drink. What people don't realise is going to AA, you, you live an amazing life following a 12-step programme uh, and you live a far better life. Um, re- removing your shortcomings by having a, a power greater than you, which is definitely Jesus Christ in my life. You know, I might say the F-bomb, I don't know, do your God. You know, praying's a massive thing for me. I have my day over. Um, at a stage now, the thought of having a hangover, really? Amateur art. I just love freezing tins of Coke Zero. That's all I want. I haven't got time to be hungover. Neither do you want to. It's pathetic. It's I've not, been, I've it's been, just not for me. Yeah, I've actually been thinking about this last while and I've looked at it and I've been like, it, is, it adds no value. So I go out on a night mm. out. I'm with good company. You know, yeah. I'm going, you know, I'm out that night and I'm going home to a warm bed. If you remove the alcohol out of it, it doesn't change anything. It only adds mm. to it. Because I just think anybody who's a managing director or top sales guy or whatever, or anybody who's wanting to get on, if you're out drinking or partying, you're not taking it serious. And that's okay too. If that's your life, I'm not judging anybody. Enjoy your life. But if you really want to go somewhere, you have to make a choice where to stop. So I've stopped. And it's just, it doesn't appeal. I feel it's better for you. Use two boys. All of the time. And I'm just a hallion. <laughs> I, I enjoy the crack. We actually stayed in your apartment a couple of weeks ago. We were down in Belfast. Right. So that's, we, that's that was right. our last we, we have night an out. Annual, like, we have an annual done. Christmas night out. Sean was like, "That's it. That's me and hangovers done." Done. And I said that was. I, I said the same the following week. But anyway, we uh, and you know what, Tom? It's, it's pretty. We didn't have you on the week before. We could have just scored a discount. Not there. <laughs> 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 we Christmas is here. Mm. What for people out there that's that's maybe coming into Christmas. Um, what what advice? What if you if if you if somebody's like you know what I I I want I want to to I want my twenty twenty three to be the year that I've started or changing something about that twenty twenty two didn't go well for me. What what advice would you give them? You know it doesn't this New Year's resolution nonsense and all has to stop it. You know it doesn't work. You know some most people have give up by you know the first twenty four hours in twenty twenty three. You have to just be all if you really do believe in yourself and you want it all. You have to be hard on yourself. You have to be disciplined and then it'll become a daily routine. Write goals like your life depends on it because it does. Believe in yourself. Don't let other people hold you back. You know, keep going. Never stop. If you don't quit, you'll never, you know, you'll never lose. You just keep going and going and going and going and going. It just depends if you really want it. If you really want it, you can achieve anything. And it's no cliche. It is a limitless life if you totally believe in yourself. You know, the biggest fight that you'll always fight is you against you. But then have the awareness to realise that self-doubt's fake. Like I, That's why I wrote that book, Fearless. It's an antidote to self-doubt. Don't buy into the madness in your head. You are good enough. You can do it all. The Well, you've, we've, talked, we've touched on the success, the driving thing. You, you've had knocks on the road too. What would you, how do you respond to when you get that knock? How do you respond? What what? You just go at it again or just continue it on or but life work through it. Life is all about ups and downs and adversity. What lives on the other side of massive adversity? A life of your wildest dreams. Why would you not get up and keep going? Success is your duty. Success is rented and the rent is due every day. Get up and attack and go at it every day. Believe in yourself. Is there days you get do you have to realign yourself? Do you have to is there days you have to say to yourself, right? Today I just I just off a hundred percent. There's days I wake up with anxiety, frightened for no reason, but I know that it's self doubt that's attacking me, and I'll go through different triggers of goals, gratitude, mantra. Uh, I'll go to the gym a couple of times, and sometimes it's a photograph of my wife and my kids that just puts me straight back in the alignment. I don't let it affect me. Having a bad day for me personally, other people are different. It's a choice. 
and I don't want to lose a day out of being grumpy or it's going to be one of them days. No chance. Not a chance. And see the days I don't want to do it, there are the days I'll always keep turning up. No matter what, I'm there, still standing, ready to go, even though I don't want to be there. Because that's the days the amazing goals turn up. Or the universe the next day goes, boom, you deserve that because you were there yesterday. All in mentality, all the time. Well, And it might feel a bit much for people. I don't care. I'm just all in. For all the right reasons. When I'm saying something positive on social media, it's the touch on one person, and it's maybe helping them. And it's lovely when you're getting stopped in the streets saying, man, you know something, thank you so much for doing that. And you're like, no problem. I'm only putting it out there to help people. See, you touched on there just um, saying about the positive. You're putting the positive out. Mm. Do you get much, ne- well, negative, but if you do get negative, how do you handle that as well? You know, any negative that you get? I don't care at all. Simple as that. It's that simple. Yeah. If I was able to put any energy into reading something or thinking about what somebody's saying about me, it would be holding me back from writing a sentence on an email or my brain thinking about another deal. And see if somebody wants to hit on me, fine. If that's their objective. But what is your reasoning behind it? You know, spend a bit more time loving yourself as a person or developing yourself um, or get over yourself. You know, but it blows my mind. Um, but I really don't care. And when I'm putting something positive out, it's merely me putting something out into the universe, saying something out loud in public on the thought of maybe just hitting that one person who really needed that wee confidence boost, whether it's a man, a woman or a kid. Yeah. So if that's a bad thing, well, I must be really bad then. Because <laughs> I'll continue to keep doing yeah. it, you know. You know, i got to give that to you because, it, it, you know, we do put this content. We put the... You, do, do you ever feel that moments, but Tom, why, why where you used to do something? Why are you doing this podcast to help people and give them content? Add value to somebody's life. It's commendable on a Sunday. Or, or, or wow. you know what we... Th- thank we, you. So, thanks. Thanks for doing it. No, no, thanks for, thanks for being on. And, and we, we enjoy it. But, you know, that was our big thing. And I says to him, you know, we go here and we put it out. And, and you, you expose yourself. You put yourself out there and you, you think. And I said, but you know what? Let's have the one underlining principle that we have. That we have a bit of crack with people. Mm-hmm. We give them their platform. And then we're, we're having the crack. Because what's the worst thing that'll happen? We went and we had a bit of crack. And we spoke to somebody. And in depth. And Who was interested? That, that what, what's the worst thing that happened there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We went and we had a conversation with someone. We had the crack. And we went home. And the rest of it, and all the things we talk, and like, I, I have plans and goals, and we just sat there and discussed them, and what we want to do, and where we want to take this. And But, well, if I, the I key think, I think, under- I th- thing... I'm going to interrupt you, you know, purposely. I think you're playing it too small. The two years are a pleasure to be sitting with. I think you need to rock us right up, and do something huge online. And we touched on that for 2023, for you guys. So let's yeah. go. You Knock know, it out of the park. Go. You aren't good at this. You're very the good. The live so tour let's, let's go. is coming in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. You hear this here. We will be on the road. And then that show that you spoke about. Yeah. So rack your goals up higher. Yeah. Well, look, I, uh, I've i enjoyed it. That's been I, brilliant. I, I, you know, why, why did you say it like you were fucking surprised? No, no. And, and, and I'm not <laughs> and, No, no, no. Because you know something. And, and this is it. it, it I didn't. We, we, <sighs> we talked about this. Sean doesn't be on social media, you know. See, so, I'm only new to this. Like, literally, whenever we started this, my social media was created by own. But it's new to me. I've only been on it a year and a half, two years. Three weeks. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But what I'm saying is, I found the power of it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I use it for a business you, point of view. If you can mm-hmm. harness social media, it is a massive tool. It's Huge a success tool. too. Yeah. I built that business in, in lockdown. I actually had to set up a social media account in 2019 when I had decided that this is what I was going to do. And somebody goes to me, so you you weren't even on, and then you decided to start doing these videos and competitions. We were doing houses and 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 yeah, yeah. thing. And I says to them, it, "Well, I needed that too. I needed that too." But one thing I would say to anyone out there is, that if you can be producing content on social media as opposed to consuming it, oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Then yeah. then yeah. you've got the right balance. Social media is there to work for you, yeah. not not there to control you. And so many people is controlling them. So, you know, genuinely saying it out there to people, I know I might be on it, but just be careful that it's not sucking you in too much, especially the negative parts of it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I and, and you said why was I surprised? I wasn't surprised, but it, 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 the one thing that come for me, Tom, you're you're an intense character. You are you're you're, you're a character. And, <laughs> but uh, even whenever you arrived here, I, <laughs> I I was yawning here, sitting at the table, and then you come in through the door, and I was like, ready to rock here <laughs> because you do like if somebody comes into the room and they have that they're running at that higher vibe there. It only mm. brings you up to it. But we all have that unlimited energy. It's it's if you know how to tap into it. Yeah, like I can go from being tired, boom, I just flick a switch. Well, I hope 2023 brings all them things for you because then me and Sean will be on that yet. <laughs> it's 100% happening. Well, uh, Tom, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. Uh, you know what? Happy Christmas, and I hope some of you can take away from that. What we are going to do is we're going to drop uh, Tom's Dream Mentor in details below it, and uh, you can have a look and reach out to Tom's team. And thank you. if you feel that this, you've watched this, and you're like, you know what, 2023, I'm going to go at it. Here it is. Thanks very much, guys. Good man. Cheers. Thank you. Good man. Merry Christmas, guys. Winners win.